Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll create a organic style pattern in Photoshop. Before we begin with this video, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. Let's swing back to Photoshop and create a brand new document. I'll choose File New. My document's going to be 512 by 512 pixels. That's a good size. Whatever size you use, it must be a multiple of 256 pixels. So 512, 1024 is just fine. I'm going to fill my background with white right now and click Create. We're going to use Difference Clouds here, so we'll choose Filter and then Render and Difference Clouds. That fills the document with a pattern of clouds. Now, if you don't like the clouds that you got, you can undo this with Edit Undo and go back and do Filter, Render and then Difference Clouds again until you get a set of clouds that you actually like. Let's go to the Layers panel. We need to unlock this layer, so I'm just going to click on the lock icon in earlier versions of Photoshop. You may need to double click on that. I'm going to add another layer and place it immediately underneath the layer we're working on. This is transparent, that's really important. We're going to enlarge our document choosing Image and then Canvas Size. Make sure you use Canvas Size, you don't want to be using Image Size. We're going to double the width and height, which is 1024 by 1024 pixels. We're going to click here to put this piece ultimately in the top corner of the new sized document. I'll click OK. Now we're going to go and get this. Go to the Move tool, hold the Alt or Option key and drag a duplicate of this shape away, making sure that you place it in the exact top corner of the document. Go and select both of these and Alt or Option drag away and just place it in the bottom of the document. You should have a seamless pattern or a seamless tile. So when you zoom in, you shouldn't be able to see any lines through the document at this stage. We're going to take all four of these layers that have content on them, right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. That will allow us to turn the next blur that we're going to make into an editable blur. So you'll go Filter and then Blur and then Gaussian Blur. At this stage it's hard to know just how much blur you want. It's not a lot, so I'm thinking somewhere between about 15 and 20 is a good value. So let me just crank mine up somewhere in that area. I'll click OK. But this is an editable effect, so we can change it in a minute. Next up we're going to add a Posterize Adjustment. So click the topmost layer, Layer, New Adjustment Layer and then Posterize. What Posterize does is it bands the image, so it extracts from that sort of fuzzy image that we had, bands of colour. Well, we're going to increase this until we see something that we like, and you can see the beginnings of the pattern appearing here. So a small adjustment of value 1 or 2 is going to change how the pattern looks. So you want to choose something that you like. Next we're going to add a gradient map. So with the posterized layer selected, choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then go down to Gradient Map. Now Gradient Map applies a gradient across the image. Right now my gradient is white to black, yours might be different. What you want is a gradient that's full of color bands, things like this. When you click on these, they're applied to the image with the content over this side of the gradient applied to the darkest most pixels, and the content over here applied to the lightest most pixels. And because this gradient's got bands through it, we're getting green and blue appearing in not only the lighter areas, but in also in some of the darker areas. And you can adjust this gradient, so you can sort of drag over to pull out some more colors. You can add more color stops, so I could click in here to add another color stop and even change the color of that stop to get something more interesting into the document. Going back to the original images where we're working on it, you'll be able to also adjust your Gaussian Blur. So double click on your Blur and simply adjusting the Blur is going to adjust the detail that you're seeing in the pattern. So between the Gaussian Blur, the amount of colors that you've got set in your Posterize, 
and the actual gradient map that you've applied to the image, you can now go ahead and create an interesting effect here. So I'm going to add another color stop in here. This adjuster here will adjust where the transition of colors is between this color here and this color. So we can push it in one direction or the other and sort of sharpen up that transition. So when I'm happy with what I've got, I'm just going to settle for this for now. I'm going to the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool. Up here we're going to choose fixed size and we're going to set the width and height to the starting document size. So when we started out it was 512 by 512. So we're setting it to 512 by 512. And I'll just click somewhere in the middle of the document. This will allow me to extract a seamless repeating pattern from this object. Once the selection's in place, I'll make sure that I've got all my layers selected by clicking on the topmost one, shift clicking on the bottom, and then I'll go to Edit and Define Pattern and click OK. To test our pattern, we're going to create a brand new document. This can be any size that you like. There's no limitation on this. I'm using 1920 by 1080, which is my screen size. I'll choose Layer, New Fill Layer, Pattern and click OK. And the last pattern that I created is the one that is applied at this stage. So this is what our seamless repeating pattern looks like. Now you can go back to the original document and make changes to it. So we can go back and adjust the blur. We can adjust the gradient map that we have applied to the document as well. So I'm just going to change that. Let's change the posterize. Add some more colors to it. Go back to the gradient map and choose a different gradient. I'm looking for a gradient that has some distinct bands through it. Now if you like this gradient but you aren't particularly happy with the red, you can just come and double click on the red stops and change that to something different. So I've actually change the whole gradient basically by just changing these stops. Now I don't have to change both of them because the one at this end wasn't even being applied to the image but for the sake of completeness you may want to change both of them. What I'm doing now is just looking at pulling these colors out of the image just making sure that I'm getting what I'm looking for. I'm going to duplicate this stop so I'm clicking on it to sample it, clicking over here to duplicate it. So I'm really happy with that. I'll click OK. I've still got my 512 by 512 marquee over the image. So I'll just select all the layers, click on one, shift click on one at the other end, choose edit and then define pattern. Go back to our document, double click on the pattern fill layer, go down to the very last pattern and click on it to apply it to the image. So there's a way of creating some really interesting organic patterns in Photoshop and it's done very simply by using our difference clouds, then applying a Gaussian blur to it and then your two adjustment layers, the posterize adjustment layer and your gradient map adjustment layer. And there's an unlimited number of patterns that you can create this way. Before we finish this video, let's have a look at Photoshop 2020 and beyond because if you're using one of those versions, you'll find that the gradient map tool doesn't have the gradients that I've been using in this video. It doesn't until you actually put them there. So I've opened this design that we were working on this time in Photoshop 2020. Now this is going to be the same going forward. I'm going to double click on the gradient map because I created it in an earlier version of Photoshop. When I go to the gradient editor, you'll see that the only gradients that we've got are these that are sort of grouped together by hue. And none of these are the kinds of gradients that we were actually using in this video. And so that begs the question as to how you're going to get those gradients. If you click the fly out menu here, you'll see that there are some gradient options here, but not the one that we want. In actual fact, what's happened in Photoshop CC 20 and beyond is that the gradients have been moved to their own panel. So you'll go to window and then gradients. This is the gradients that are installed by default with Photoshop. Again, none of these are the kinds of gradients that we need. 
Instead, what we need are the legacy gradients. So I'm going to this flyout panel. This time we have different options and this time we have an option for legacy gradients. So I'll click on that. And then inside the legacy gradients are all the gradients that we are used to using. So let's just go and see if we can find the ones that we were saying earlier. See, there are some spectrums. There are some more complex ones in the pastels. Again, in the metals and there'll be more in these color harmonies. So these are the gradients that you're looking for. So before you can use them in the gradient map tool, you're first going to need to install them into Photoshop. Then when we go to the LAS palette, double click on this gradient map that we've inserted. Down here, we get other alternatives so we can go to the legacy gradients. I don't think they're as easy to move around. I don't really like this interface much at all, but that's how you're going to get to it. So for example, there's a gradient that we can use and then we can just go ahead and do the exact same thing as we've been doing and just edit this gradient. So that part of it's not going to change. It's just how you actually get hold of these more complex gradients in the first place because they're buried away a little bit in this most recent version of Photoshop. I don't expect anything to change with future versions. I think this is the way that Photoshop's going to look for the future. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.